Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is Jim Keller from Context Technology. And today I'm going to show you how easy it is with Fuse to create the structure for your application and then go ahead and add in create, read, update, and delete operations for your data all in about five minutes. So let's get started. All I've done in preparation for this example is to first create a small database with albums, artists, and record labels that you see here. The other thing I've done is downloaded Fuse and extracted it to a directory on my computer. Now, the first thing we have to do to start our Fuse application is to run the scaffold script. The scaffold script is located in the scripts install directory beneath our Fuse root. You can see here that we have fuse scaffold.php. First step is to go ahead and run that. And the scaffold script is going to ask you some basic questions about where you're putting your application and how you're going to be configuring it. The first question, enter the base path for your application, is simply where my application files are going to live. For me, that's D colon example music. Now the base URI for my application is the string I'm going to use to access it when I'm in a browser. For me, it's going to be HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash projects slash music. Would I like to configure a database connection? Yes, I would. Now I've already set up my database on the local computer, so I'm going to go ahead and type in that information here. My host name is localhost. Enter my username, my password, and then the database name, which is music. Okay, where is Fuse installed? For me, this is decolon backslash Fuse, and this is simply the directory where I extracted Fuse when I downloaded it. Okay, let's go ahead and let the scaffold script run. Now let's take a look at what the scaffold script actually did. If I open my IDE, you can see here beneath my music project that I now have a group of folders and several files that were generated by the scaffold script itself. This is the standard layout for a Fuse project, and it's how all of your Fuse projects are going to start out looking. Now let's see what happens if we open our project in a browser. If you remember, my base URI is localhost slash projects slash music. And you can see that we have a welcome screen here that's generated by Fuse and provides some links to documentation on controllers, views, and models. However, this isn't particularly useful, so let's see what else we can do. Luckily, Fuse offers a host of management scripts that will allow us to generate models, views, and controllers for use in our application. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to go into the root path for my application, which as you remember was example slash music. If I show the directory, you can see here the project layout that was created by the scaffold script. I'm going to go ahead and go into the manage directory. You can see here that we have a group of scripts that are useful for generating models, views, controllers, and also adding routes. Generally, we want to generate our models, views, controllers, and add our routes all at one shot. To do that, we're going to be using the modelViewController.php script. I'm going to go ahead and run that now. The only parameter I'm going to give it is all tables, all in caps, separated by an underscore. What this will do is read the database tables and generate the models, views, and controllers that Fuse thinks should be necessary to get us rolling. So let's go ahead and run that. As you can see, We've generated several models, several controllers, and several views. And if I go back to the IDE, I can see those changes reflected here as well. We have new controllers, new models, and new views. Now, what have we gained? If I go back to my browser, and let's say I want to list all of my record labels. I can go to slash record label, slash list, and have them come up for me automatically. And as you can see here, Fuse is already providing add, edit, and delete functionality for these records. I'm going to go ahead and edit one. Let's take this one here, different label, ID number 5. I'm going to click Edit. Let's say I change the name to New Label. And go ahead and save those changes. If I go back to my list, I refresh, you can see that our changes have been reflected in the database already. Now, let's take things one step further. Let's say I want to list the artists in my database, much like I just listed the record labels. I can go to slash artist, slash list, and bring up my list. Now, one thing you may notice is that we have the label ID listed here instead of the label name. It may be more useful to have the label name listed, so let's take a look at how we can go ahead and do that. If we go back to my IDE, the first thing I'm going to do is open my artist class. As you can see here, we've already got lines of code that were generated by the management script. I'm going to go into the init function. Now, one thing we do have to do is tell the models how they're related to one another. For instance, I'm going to tell the artist model that it belongs to a record label. And save those changes. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is go into my artist controller, as you can see here. Now this is probably the trickiest part of this exercise, 
what I'm going to do is extend the show list function of the parent class. I want to include a record labels table, so I'm going to set up an option array with include as the key and say record labels. Okay, now all I have to do is call the show list method of the parent class and pass it to that options array. Okay, now the last thing we have to do is actually go ahead and update our HTML to reflect the changes that we want. So I'm going to open my artist list view in my IDE. I'm going to go here in the header, change label ID to label name. And I'm going to go down here and also change label ID to label name again. Now if I return to my browser and refresh, we get label name instead of label ID. Now, let's do one more thing in this example. As you can see, Fuse is already providing add functionality for us. Now, if we click add, one thing you may notice is that the label ID is actually a text box by default, whereas it probably should be a select dropdown. Let's see what it takes to get a dropdown of all of our record labels. I'm going to open up my IDE. I'm going to go into my artist edit template, which contains both HTML and template parameters that Fuse replaces before rendering the page to the browser. I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to go to my label ID field. As you can see, Fuse is generating a text field, but that's not what we want. So let's go ahead and change this call. One thing we want to do is change form helper to form options helper, change text field to select all. And we're not selecting artists, we're selecting record labels, so let's go ahead and change that to record label. Now, the next two parameters are going to be the text and the value field that we want to use to populate our drop down options. So I want to use, let's say, record label name for the text, record label ID for the value. Now, the last thing we have to do is tell the select drop down what model it's selecting for. Since we're not adding a record label, we're adding an artist, we need to tell the select box that we're doing that. So what I'm going to do is say that this is for model artist. And go ahead, close my function call, and save my changes. If I go back to my browser and refresh, what you see is that we now have a drop down for our labels rather than a text box. So let's go ahead, enter a new band. We'll say they're on RCA records. Go ahead and save our changes. Now if we return to our artist list and refresh, you can see here we have a new band on RCA records. So what we've done is shown you some of the basic functionality that Fuse offers to get you up and running quickly for adding and editing data. Now there's a lot more to it than that, so if you're interested in learning more, visit phpfuse.net. Thanks.